My current role is the national lead for skill acquisition at the Australian Institute of Sport. A lot of what I do relates back to cognitive psychology and cognitive science because we're really interested in how athletes and coaches present and learn different skills. So a lot of the work we do involves how information is presented to athletes and then how that information uh, is, is interpreted and then transformed into action at the end of the day. A lot of it revolves around looking at how we can improve performances and how athletes go about learning different types of skills. So for example, one of the big projects I'm working on right now is with Rugby Sevens and, and they're really interested in communication and how that influences decision making, right? So we're looking at how the the transmission of information from different players actually translates into different performances on the field and at the end of the day what we're hoping to find is that we can we can use that information and that knowledge of cognitive science to actually help improve performances in the long run. So my journey to where I am today started back when I was doing my undergraduate at the University of Calgary back in Canada. I was really interested in psychology of sport. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant at the time, but I think through my degree I took a lot of courses related to sport but also related to the psychology side of things and, and that was the side that really got me, but I've always had a love of sport. So it was, it was trying to find ways that I could blend the two. So coming towards the end of my degree I really had no idea what I wanted to do, um, but I, one of the courses that I took was called um, Mind Sciences in Sport and that one really peaked with me because it talked about learning um, and how athletes go about uh, developing their motor skills over time and so with through that experience I decided I, I might try pursuing it a little bit more so I went and, and spoke with one of my uh, professors at the time about how we could potentially turn that interest into something else and she suggested doing a master's degree. So from my undergrad I, I progressed into a master's degree where I, I studied uh, eye movements of goaltenders and how that related back to their actions in ice hockey. Uh, and then like any good Canadian I kept on pursuing the, the ho ice hockey route. Uh, I shifted from my master's degree, I went and finished up and did a PhD and then at the end of the PhD it was a matter of looking for, for work and so I initially moved into an academic role uh, here in Australia and through that experience I kind of realized that I really enjoyed the applied side of things. So how can we actually apply some of the science and theories that we're learning about uh, into the real world? And then an opportunity came up at the Australian Institute of Sport and I jumped at it. And so now today what I do is spend a lot of time working directly with athletes and coaches to actually apply a lot of those principles and the science behind learning and skill acquisition. Yeah. Down the track I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for applying the cognitive sciences in, in the sporting world. There's a really growing interest in how the brain influences learning and performance and I think we're not too far off from technologies that will allow us to assess what athletes are doing uh, on a cognitive level in sports and I'm sort of a firm believer that you can train the brain very much like we train the body. A lot of the work that we've done up until now is really focusing on the body and when you think about how the brain actually influences how we perform, there's going to be a lot more um, doors open up down the track in terms of, in terms of improving performance by improving how we, we control what our brains do, how we control information that we take in and those different types of avenues. Without a doubt for me the most important quality that somebody working in, in the area that I'm in is, is that level of personal interaction, that personal relationship um, that you try and establish with individuals that you're working with. There's, there's no doubt that having the ability to talk to someone and translate that science is, is really critical and important because we work with a lot of different personalities. Uh, a lot of people 
don't really understand the science side of things, so you have to be able to relate with them on some other level before you sort of get down to the, the science side of things. The ability to work in a dynamic team is really important because it's it's essential that you're, you're able to interact with other scientists, athletes, coaches, administrators along the way. Um, we're all sort of working towards the same goal uh, and you need to be able to work together to get there and get the most out of, out of what we're doing. In terms of advice that I have for current students, I, you know, it's, it's a bit cliche, but I think one of the biggest things is find something that you love and stick with it. Uh, there's no doubt that you're going to be a lot happier and a lot more satisfied, I think, if you're doing something that you really enjoy. Uh, there's opportunities out there that you might not be aware of in particular areas, so it's really important if you're, if you're interested in an area just to, to dig a little bit deeper. Talk to people who are working in that particular area. I find that there's, there's not a lot of people out there who won't, will say no to you if you ask them questions and, and, and want some more information. So you know, try and approach people that you think are interesting or, or working in areas that you think are interesting and then, and then pursue that as much as you can.